Hello, in the following video we will see the GraphQL app for Shopify. With this app we will be able to run queries and mutations against the admin API of a Shopify store fairly quickly and directly from the browser. This can be useful for validating, testing and debugging GraphQL queries. It can also help you practice and get more familiar with Shopify's admin API as this app has a documentation of the API and not a completion for it built in. And with that being said, let's see how to install it. So this app is not available in the Shopify app store as you can see here when I tried searching for it. Instead, you will have to come to this link over here, which I will leave in the video description, and click on Install Shopify's GraphQL app. This will open this new tab, and over here you have to specify the URL for your store. So I will go to a tab with my store and copy this part over here after a store. Then I will go to the tab with the installer over here and paste this and then add myshopify.com. Then over here for the scopes, you can select the ones you want to have access to when running the queries in the GraphQL app. In this case, I will select all of them and I will scroll down over here and select all of the storefront API scopes as well. However, if there are some things you do not want to have access to to avoid the risk of overriding something you should not, then you can unselect it from here. After you have selected all of these scopes, then you just have to click on install and you will see this install window over here in your store and you can click on install. Once the installation is finished, you are going to see the GraphQL editor here. Then from the editor over here, you will have your query on the left side and then on the right side, you will see the result. So I have this shop name query and if I run this, we are going to see the response that Shopify's admin API is returning. So in this case, I get inside a data property, I get the shop and then name and then the result of the name of this store, which is GraphQL app, as you can see here at the top. And if you're wondering where this shop name query is coming from, this is all coming from Shopify's admin API. As you can see over here, the schema is being fetched from Shopify's admin API. But also if we go to the Shopify's documentation and we look over here for shop and select API admin GraphQL, you're going to see here the shop query. And over here, if I expand these fields, are all the different fields that I can query from this API. So if I look here for name, you're going to see here that this is the same name property that I queried over here. And this just, uh, just returns the shop's name. But let's try querying something else. For example, let's query over here the plan. And if I show the fields that are here, we have these three fields. So I can go over here and look for plan. And you see that I have auto completion because as I mentioned earlier in the video, this has a documentation integrated, so we don't really have to open this tab. We can just start typing over here and auto completion will show us the available properties. But anyways, we have the plan over here. And if I press control and space, I'm going to see here the different properties that I have available right away and a brief description of what they do. So let's query for the display name the partner development and Shopify Plus. And if I run this query over here, you're going to see that the display name of this plan is developer preview, the partner development is true, and Shopify Plus is false because this is not a Shopify Plus store. And as I auto-completed a property over here, I can auto-complete them at any level, even at the top. So for example, if I want to quickly take a look at all the available objects that I have here, I can press control and space at the topmost level and I see over here all the different things that I can query. You can see that the list is fairly extensive, but you can see over here on the right side of this panel, a brief description of what each of these resources. So now let's try querying a product. For this, I'm going to start typing product and you can see already that I have this auto completed. And over here, this receives a parameter, the ID. We will for now just keep this as an empty string. We will complete this in a moment. I open this and over here we can see all the different properties that I can query from a product. So let's just query its ID and its title for now. If I run this like that, I will get an error and you can see how errors look like. And that is because I have an invalid global ID. And now how do we get the global ID for a product? For this over here, I just need to open the list of products, click on any, and this number over here is the product ID. However, if I go to my query and paste this like this, I will still get an error because this is not a, glo a valid global ID in Shopify. 
So Shopify IDs work the following way. You have to start typing GID, which stands for global ID, then colon and double the slash, then Shopify, and then the name of the resource, in this case, product. And then this is a valid ID. And now over here, I can see its ID and its title. You can also pass the input as a variable. So over here, I will open an object. This variable section over here works like a JSON. So in this case, I will say ID. And then here, I'm going to cut all of this and put it here. And now, if here, I say query and say that my query receives a parameter. In this case, let's say ID, and this will be of type ID, and it is required. And now here, I say ID. You can see that it will use the ID that I'm using here. This dollar sign here is to specify that this is a variable in GraphQL. So once I run this, you can see that I get the same result I was getting before. We are also able to modify resources from over here. So let's open a new tab by clicking over here, Add tab. And you can see that I now have my previous query in this tab and an empty tab over here to run a different query. But in this case, I will run a mutation. So let's do mutation. And over here, let's do product update. And here we have to pass a product as an input. We will open this and pass this in a moment. But let's quickly get the result over here. In this case, I want to update the title. So let's pass here an ID of the product I want to update. So I have to give it this ID. Let's paste this here. And now the property that I want to update is the title. So let's give this a new title. In this case, I'm just going to copy this title. And over here, I would add updated. And if I run this query, I can do it by pressing this button over here or just pressing Ctrl and Enter. You can see that now the product title is the collection of snowboard liquid updated, as I said over here. And if I go to this product in Shopify and refresh this page, you can see that it got updated. So this is how you would do it in the API. And if you wanted to test how to do that in the API very quickly, you can do so from the GraphQL app. And now that we've seen what we can do with this app, let's quickly take a look at the different settings we have available. Starting with over here, this settings menu, we just have the things clear the storage data and the theme, we can set it to system, light or dark. This is how the dark theme looks like and the light one is the one I've been using by default throughout this video. Let's keep it at dark. And then here at the top, we can select the API we want to use. Throughout this video, I've been using the admin API, but as you can see here, I also have access to the storefront API if I wanted to run queries against this API. Then next to this, we also have the API version. Shopify releases an API version every three months, and usually we have access to the last three versions, the current one, the next one, and an unstable one. So we are currently in the first one of 2025, so the one released in January. The next one will be the one released in April, three months later. And we have access to the October 2024 one, the July 2024 one, and the April 2024 one. Once the April 2025 one becomes the stable one, then the April 2024 one will be deleted from this list, and the list will continue moving. In the unstable branch over here, you can find queries and mutations that are still in beta. But if you wanted to test those out, then this is one way to do it. Then over here, we have a list of all the different keyboard shortcuts we have available. You can pause the video to take a closer look at this. Next, we over here can refresh the GraphQL schema. If for some reason the autocompletion stops working for you, you can try refreshing the GraphQL schema as that normally solves it. Then over here, we have the Documentation Explorer. For all the different queries we want to run or we can run, we can click on any of these and we can see its different properties. You can see, for example, over here that inside this node, I have all of these properties and this is a short description of what those properties are. If I want to know what app developer type is, I can click on it and I can continue clicking on things until I reach uh, an end. For example, here, there, are, there is nothing I can click, but I can go back and click on something else if I want. And over here, you have a history of all the queries you've run. In case you run something and it accidentally end up deleting it, this is one way to get back to it. So if I wanted to go back to this query, I can click over here 
and I can, even if I click on an older query, I can go to the latest one by just clicking on the one at the top. And that does it for this video. If you found it helpful, remember to like and subscribe for more Shopify-related content, and I will see you all in the next one.